Hi, I'm Joel and this is a level editor I made in preparation for Indie Speedrun 2015. I'll try to keep this brief so if anyone ever watches this and on top of that has any questions feel free to message me. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new map file. Um, navigate to the folder. And as you can see this is a custom file browser. Um, I'm using the Love2D engine, so it's a little more tricky to use a Windows dialog. Um, so I thought it would be less work to do this file browser, and I think I was right. Uh, it, it wasn't a lot of work. And I thought about putting in, uh, in integrating plugins so you can not just use this Zoom feature for as an asset browser for images, but also for bone animations or shaders or something. We're going to um, create a new map. It's going to be called demo.map. The first thing we're going to do is add an entity description file. Um, more about this in the blog post, um, which is linked in the description. Um, these entity files contain um, descriptions for different kinds of objects in your game. This would probably correspond to something like weapon pods, spawn points, AI markers, and of course level geometry. Um, in this case, it's just wrappers for the basic components of the editor. The editor is very modular, so um, there is nothing special about these components. You could, as part of modifying the editor for your game, uh, i.e. meaning you, you um, write this entity file and maybe some components. You could write all these without um, changing anything in the editor itself. Even the edit modes I will going, I'm going to show you. So the first thing um, is a sprite with transforms. Um, as you can see this is a perfectly hyper-realistic peach and it has some properties these properties all correspond to the components of this entity type. There's a core component which has a name. You can just name it Sprite. And you can hide it and you can lock it so it can't be selected. Except if you use this list. But so you can't move it by accident or something. It has transforms. Um, these these um, this is the position. You can change it with this number wheel. You can put in number as text you can copy paste of course um, and you can click these buttons to access edit modes which are also uh, implemented as part of the components you see that this text changed and it says mode move entities in this mode I can move these entities there are shortcuts for it so you see this changes and I don't click anything I can rotate them I can scale them I can <laughs> yeah, scale them I can choose to not keep the aspect ratio. Um, there are also properties this, that belong to the sprite itself, like the image. I can change the image to rock, for example, or change the color. Um, there are also global properties, like the center markers, which show the center. In case I would want to, I'm not sure if this works exactly, no. Um, something like this, yes. In case I want to change the point, the, the pivot point, pivot point of the object, I could do that. So it rotates around a different point. I can um, decide to hide or show these markers. I can also show or hide these names, the borders of the entity, uh, the, gr the background grid, and I, um, the spacing can be changed too. And I can also change the background color, of course. Um, I didn't show the console, but um, it shows every action I do, and it also shows the command that is executed when I hover the button. It's showing in this in this title line. Um, everything I do with my GUI could be done through typing, and typing is capable of doing a little bit more, of course, and you can write your scripts, so you can 
um, make some things easier that you find yourself doing often in the editor. I'll hide it for now though because most of the information is not very valuable. Um, there are also the polygons. These are the core components of the editor. Apart from the sprite, there's the polygon. Um, you change your append points to the polygon mode, which is uh, initialization mode. You can not access uh, in another way. It will just add points to your polygon. And when you're done, you change to the default mode by pressing space and the polygon will be meshed. You can edit the vertices by moving them. You can add new ones by clicking on the edges. You can remove um, vertices by right clicking on them. I think it's, yeah. yeah. Um, I will put on a texture. Um, I will use sandstorm. And um, I can also change the color. I can edit the texture. I can do this by left clicking and, and I can rotate it. Um, there's also this debug mode, which shows the um, if it would be only one texture, it would show the, the where it would be in this polygon. This is used, for example, f for games which use a texture atlas for level geometry parts, um, in which case you would um, this texture would be a lot bigger than the polygon and you would want to find a specific part of it and adjust the polygon and you would do that with this mode. Um, as you see though, these um, are not very aesthetically pleasing. So um, there are the fancy polygons. Actually this is um, a naive implementation of these. We have a more robust one but it's a lot slower, so I will not show it for now. And it's not implemented in the editor because we're not really sure what we're going to do with it. Yes, um, the fancy polygons can have two textures. I will use the dry lake texture for the base and the grass texture for the border. And I can, oops. As you can see, there's a border appearing very soon. All right, this. There's a border appearing, and I can also blend it. Yes, so it looks like it's rock with grass growing on it. Or at least I can pretend it does. If you can see, this, this just sitting inside a level in a game doesn't look very nice and maybe out of place, and this looks a lot more um, organic. And maybe like it has a little volume. So um, the texture is a little big. Let's do something like this. And try to hide the seam if possible. At least it's, at least it's better, I think. I can pretend, yes. Um, there also there's also a way we, we found that is quite nice for some games I think where you would um, take the same texture for both border and <laughs> let's take this for both border and the base and you would just change the color um, for example darkening oh Jesus It's embarrassing, but I'm not going to redo this video. <laughs> okay, okay. This is embarrassing. Okay, demo.map, nothing in it. Test, test. There it is. No fancy polygon. There you go. I don't know what happened there. Actually, I thought this was almost bug free because I haven't found a bug in a while. So if I make the base a little darker, and then increase the border, you can see that this already looks like it has fake lighting. Light, lighting. See, this is, looks a lot better 
then polygon like this, which just has a single texture. This is a, especially for game jams, this could be an easy way to, to make level, ge level geometry that has volume. Um, you can also invert these colors. This looks in, it looks interesting, but I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, to be honest, but why we're at it. Yes. It looks um, embossed. I don't know. <laughs> um, you can also put on a fan. I will do it with the, with the fancy polygon, of course. Um, I need some more points. The fan is a texture that's mostly something like this grass. You can um, change the height of it. You can change the offset if you want to. And you can decide which edges should have a fan. I can paint it with my right mouse button. Uh, it's, it's removing it and left mouse button is adding it. Um, yes. There's one way we use this in the game jam game. Um, I actually didn't think of it, but I think it's a great it was a great idea. Save it. I have an image. I have an image. In this case, the there's no way this polygon could have this many points to look this to, to that to have that kind of micro structure, microscopic microscopic and relatively microscopic structure. So we used a fan, which I will offset up. This is C. It's the same the same pattern, but with an alpha blending with a gradient alpha gradient and some um, grass on it and we just put it on there and then it looks like dirt but <laughs> in a good way yes um the game is about plants by the way and i will put up a blog post about it very soon as soon as the voting period starts yeah that's pretty much all the editor does um except being very easy to extend <laughs> of course um, and thank you for watching.